Sykes TV. Uh, what a what a debut, a win at Oakwell. Miserable conditions, isn't weather, but not in game. Um, so yeah, quite a bit to talk about. To be fair, in a the bounds of win at Oakwell, I think for in league since first time since what February, I think it is. I let to believe. So let's get first thing first. A lot of things were mentioned um, about the Davis uh, Keeler Dunn. Would he be starting? Wouldn't he be starting? He's starting 11. So when the first 11, you know, starting team lineup came out, so I mean, it was like interesting. It was going to be, you know, see how he adapts, see how he fits into the squad, not the team necessarily, but in the, just in the squad in general, as uh, we own for us as well. You know, that. Keeler Dunn been playing uh, for Maxfield Town, Humphreys. Let's believe he's just been training at Wigan, so we're on the bench. Uh, but we'll get uh, we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, let's give a shout out as well. Um, went to Oakwell signing shop. I don't know the lady, uh, but she approached me with her mother, said that she enjoyed watching the Friday Night Live on Tykes TV, which I fully appreciate. And also, uh, Oakwell signing shop got a mention as well. So again. Uh, appreciate everybody for noticing me and having just a general chat what's your thoughts about you know ex-player other player going what do you think about the results so it was nice to just stop and have a chat with the people so again to ground watching through warm up some of that kind of rule run um, again as a coach I'll get on to that kind of through game as well but watching you know when, when lads are uh, warming up and that very knowledgeable, taking a lot of things in and that. So, you know, kind of thing, things can only get better for kind of um, potential bounds of managing in the future. I'd like to think so. But again, get back to the match. I started off from well um, on front foot. So, in the face, so on press, it were unbelievable. Keeler Dumb, difference. He was making runs, he was making. You know, the passes, the the, the awareness, link-up play were fantastic. Luke Connell, I think he came into it as a captain. Second half, I don't know if we're a bit tired, it's because of a few straight pass going, but we'll get on to that a bit later. Pretty pretty strong, solid start after, you know, what, four or five minutes delay due to whatever it was, we can go net, net in the summer. So again, on front foot and that, Flick, Cry Flick esque, I want to call it Flick esque by Luke O'Connell. Great awareness for Keeler Dunn to run onto and put it away. That war sublime. I think that if I had him in front of Ponty, I would have just gone ballistic. Went ballistic anyway, but great passing, great movement, very slick. Uh, probably conditions helped as well. We've been, you know, pretty wet and damp, but you can't take out away from that crisp passing. A lot of positives from the first half. Um, I thought Craig, unsung hero in my bit, in, in my eyes, amount of running and amount of stuff we were doing in midfield, the dirty work, the unnoticeable work in midfield. Um, you know, Adam Phillips, Barry Cotter, Keeler Dunn, you know, Mark Roberts, we all getting plaudits and fairly deserved, you know. Sam Cosgrove doing a lot of. Uh, the donkey work kind of stuff, holding it up and constantly getting fouled. We'll get onto that as well. But again, I'm imp- very impressed with how we approach the game. We didn't really threaten us in the first half until that blunder, lapse, a concentration at back, um, ball through, a couple of our defenders running down on it. They were also running down it and Gabby in no man's land and got slotted home. Again, it was a frustrating mistake, a frustrating incident, how it happened, materialised. But the great thing from that is that I saw players going up to Gabby, you know, and to my shoulder compared to last season when things like that had happened 
it's a blame game. But one thing I've noticed this season under Daniel Clark, if something has happened, people are here to support one another. Whereas last season, it was arms up, uh, shrugging shoulders, pointing, gesturing, always doing this, and it was like a blame game. This season, I saw Pines, I saw Cotter, you know, kind of come on, let's go, let's let pick it up. But refreshing to see that I like that a lot rather than if you made a blunder, fair enough, you've done it. You don't need everybody on your case and blaming, point finger pointing, especially in front of the punty end. The support from the team members sport hugely for me about that so going on for into the second half again it was one of them weird it was which way is this tie gonna go you know his own record in league it hasn't been great for whatever reason is a way form second to none if not the best in league so it was good to see that certain things were happening you know, Ed didn't drop down. O'Keefe came on for Pines. I thought it might have been a pull or something. I think it was a tactical change, what I later said by Daryl Clark to Radio Sheffield. So again, it was, where do we go? How do we approach this? And again, we we tried to dictate the play game. Mr Rovers, you could see what we're trying to do in certain areas, what we're trying to manipulate and what we're trying to do. How Sam Crossgrove did not get a foul is beyond me. I thought some very, very dodgy, if not dubious, decisions were being made. Not only were it in front of referee, but more or less in, in line with Lino, whereas I forgot who the Sorovich player was, but Sam Crossgrove come running through on right hand side. San Cosgrove gets dragged down by his arm. Cosgrove goes down, and then their defender goes falling down and claims foul, and he ends up getting fouled rather than being a penalty. How can you drag a player, opposition player down by arm? That defender then took a tumble over Cosgrove, and then it go opposite way. It's a, a foul to opposition. Well, no reason for him to for Cosgrove to go down because he was through. He went right hand side. He could have cut across. Baffling. It well, uh, one of well, I was one of the worst decisions. I think it was the worst decision in game, and were a few more in in that. But again, it's not just us. You know, it's EFL. I think standard refereeing battle needs to improve. Same old record again. I know, but other fans as well will will feel the same pain. Getting back to the game again. I personally thought Barry Cotter might have been took off because I didn't know if he was get, getting tired or cramping up or all like that. I thought he might have been took off a bit earlier. But what a cross. What a cross. I was, I was sat there and I'm seeing him running him down, running down. I'm thinking, is he going to get his foot round it in time before it goes out because it was surface? Is he going to get it wrapped round? Is he got, what a cross and met sublimely by Phillips. Fantastic goal, fantastic cross, everything worked great in that. Got to get him down to get the ball whipped in and men in box. 2-1. Fantastic. I, I, I like speechless because it was fully really deserved. I thought Barnsley deserved it on day. Before we get to the summary, I'll get back to the 19th minute as well for uh, Cal Simpson's, you know, family member I think all four stands applauded you know I'm looking at uh, Conor Huran and uh, Devaney and Dugout as well everybody everybody like applauding everybody applauding and showing appreciation and rightly so and under such tragic circumstances Um, so yeah to all the Simpson family Everybody but knows them. Uh, heartfelt condolences from everybody at Tykes TV. Uh, once a red, always a red. Getting back to the game. Again, I was talking to my son and a few people around me. It was like, it was a bit man at match. I think it was always going to be Keeler done. 
on his work later, Matt. But Voss, I think Voss, he could have chucked uh, another four or five names in in, in ring for that one. Um, I really do. But again, it's a win. In latter stages, it was getting a bit nervy, to say the least, especially with conditions. Good game management as well. Our purpose are looking to see what, what how, how we want to manage this. And Conor O'Ran constantly, constantly, constantly gesturing and telling the lads to calm it. I watch him when look, Conor was taking corners, Killer Dunn was taking corners. I worried about ball boys. If people weren't standing, we saw that as well. Calm it down. Game management, see it out. Do what needs to be done. Again, compared to last season, we probably have still been going for another goal. Which, if it happened, fair enough, but you don't put all the eggs in one basket. Good game management yet again. And then when you're looking at your, your senior players on there, they knew what it needs to get done. Other teams do it. We're now doing it. A lot better. An own win. I think we're sitting third in the table. And I know people will be saying, oh yeah, we'll, a lot over get we're third in the table. I'm not looking at the points, I'm just looking at we're third in the table at the minute. Sitting pretty. I just wanna before I shut off this, I just wanna get on a bar because it was med on um Radio Sheffield. I'm on about the attendance. And I do agree because it was under 10,000. I think 387, I believe, were from, or 300 something at seven, were from Bristol Rovers. And I know a lot's been said about ticket prices and stuff like that, whether it be cup games and I'm on about league games like now. And it's, it's not a rant or it's not a, you know, it's just an observation. It's just my thoughts on it. Could the ticket prices be, be, be sorted out? On day ticket prices to get more people in. And people say, What price do you want it to be? 20 is plenty and all this kind of stuff. I'm a season ticket holder. It is my son and a lot of my uh, friends, season ticket holders. And we all bother Bronte, even the early, early bird ones. You know, we had increase in that. So get that. Whether it can be any kind of reward and discounts for seat ticket holders to to ease it, because if you're going to be looking at people to get through by ticket for match day, you know, they're coming for a game, whether it be on the day or the pre book ticket, and it's 25, 26, 27, 28, whatever price it is, depending on category and everything like that. If they say a round figure is, say, you know, 20, or so they say it's 22 or 23 pound a ticket. You know, you're going to have that conflict as, well, I'm a senior ticket holder. What's that mean for me? Because I pay mine in advance and what's saving am I making on this? What's it? And I know the club have got to make money. Totally understandable. Of course, we've got to make money. But is there a way around it where we can get more bums on seats? Because I'm thinking, it was under 10,000, 900, 900, 900, 9,000 and odd, right? Would it be worthwhile the club? And the, let me know your thoughts on this, people watching back in comments, because it's always about, this is my thought, but it'd be interesting to know what your opinion is out there on this as well. It's all about opinions, isn't it? So say you go and buy a ticket and it's 27 quid, and we select some out, and maybe we don't get 10,000 in, right? If we dropped it down, if we, if we tried it out, I'm not going to say we've got to do it, try it out and say we dropped it down to 23 quid you know 23 quid for a ticket on day i don't know 25 right would that be more beneficial for club gain a few more hundred in or if it, you know a thousand extra bodies in at that price knowing that potentially they could spend full drink which a lot's been made of, i know merchandise and stuff would that be more beneficial, knocking a couple of quid off that, getting a few more bodies in turnstiles and keeping it the system that it is now, missing out on that? Again, that's just my thought. And 
Let me know your comments on this. I might put some attack on Twitter. I'll get in contact with Marcus from BFC Polls. Um, we third in league. We're playing some decent football. We've got Darren Cl uh, Daryl Clark. We've got his players in Davis Ke uh, Keeler Dunn, Humphreys. We've got a, what I'm looking at like now, decent squad. Not team, decent squad. I'd rather get more people into work well, make it a proper atmosphere, buzzing atmosphere, sell it out, intimidating atmosphere, rather than have gaps dotted about. Again, it's just my thought. Let me know your comments on this. Going back to the game, my man at match, Keely Dunn, goal, his work rate through the game. But I think, you know, you could have mentioned Craig, Cotter, Connell. You know, there's a few players in there what you, you could chuck the, the name into the ring. So that's that's my thoughts on the game. Let me know your thoughts, you know. I, I think I went 3-1, score prediction, ended up being 2-1. A win's a win. Let me know your thoughts on the game. Let me know your thoughts on lining up. Keely Dum going to be a, a key player for doubt, uh, no doubt. Well, like I say, thanks all for watching. Have a great rest of your weekend. Please like, subscribe and share. One thing left to say, you Reds.